Hello all, today we'll be discussing about something called as curse of dimensionality. Uh, this particular topic is a very important topic guys because uh, this is something with respect to uh, the understanding of feature selection and feature engineering. Uh, the curse of dimensionality. So let us just understand what exactly it is. So when I call, say something about dimensionality, this is nothing but dimensions. You know? This is something called as dimensions. Dimensions are also called as features. Features, it may be independent feature or it may be a target output feature. Uh, features are basically like attributes. It is also called as attributes. Okay. It is also called as attributes. Now let us just consider some example. Uh, I'm going to take a data set and in that particular data set, suppose I want to create some independent models. The only condition that I'm going to change is that in this particular model, from that particular data set, I'm going to take two features. From in my next model, I'm going to take five features. In my model M3, suppose I'm going to take 10 features. And then in M4, I'm going to take 100 features. Uh, when I say I'm taking 100 features, that basically means I'm considering the 100 independent features from there and the target output. I am actually trying to create a model or train the model on that particular data. Similarly, if I take in my M5 model like 200 features, and over here I'm going to take 10,000 features, and here I'm going to take 10,000 features. Now, let us just consider a very simple example. Now, suppose I, I, I consider that I want to find out what is the price of the house with respect to the size of the house and number of bedrooms. Okay. Now, if I take this scenario, I have two independent features, right? And I have one output feature that is my price. I'm going to give this or I'm going to train this particular model M1 by using these two features and one my output feature, which is called as price. Now in my next model, what I do is that, and suppose I get some accuracy AC1. I'll say A double C1, okay? Now in my next model, which is my independent model M2, I'm going to give the same data set, but instead of just giving two independent features, I'm going to consider five independent features now. Now when I say five independent features, it may be something like state, okay? It may be something like what is the bedroom size, Okay, and any number of features that I can additionally add. You can just think of that. You are just trying to make up some features and you're trying to provide this particular information to the model, right? Now, when I give this five features to my model M2 and I train it, it definitely gives me a better accuracy than the previous one, right? Because in this particular model, I'm going to give a data set which has enough information for the model to learn more about the data. So the accuracy one that we got it over here will be always less, less than accuracy two, which is actually found out by the model two. Similarly, when I go ahead and I try to create my next independent model that is M3, and but here the condition is that I'm going to take 10 independent features from this particular data set. Okay, and I say 10 independent feature, I'm going to take that 10 features along with the output. Okay, now this particular model M3 will also give us some accuracy, which will be like my ACC3. And suppose this particular model also gives me a very good accuracy and this accuracy is greater than M2 and it is greater than M1. Okay. Now, similarly, as we go ahead, okay, as we go ahead by increasing the features, our accuracy may is increasing, right? But after some time, after a threshold value, suppose my threshold value over here is 10 features after this particular threshold value, what usually happens is that as we increase the number of features, right? Our model will not be giving much more accuracy than the previous one. But as we explain from here, as I'm going from M1 to M3, I'm increasing the number of features and we saw over here that our accuracy was actually increasing. But when we went to M4, you know, after reaching a threshold value of the number of features, we, we are actually giving away a hundred features, right? And we are trying to train that particular number of features in mind next independent model that is M4. And here I'm finding it out that the accuracy that I am getting over here, which is my ACC4 will be less than this particular M3, right? Now here is what we say with respect to the curse of dimensionality, right? It is not always necessary that as you go on increasing the number of features, your model will be able to give you a very better accuracy than the previous one. Okay. And similarly, now after this, what will happen if I have this ACC4, right? 
Then similarly, I'll create an independent model M5 and here I'll be giving my 200 features from the data set. And over here, you will be seeing that you'll be getting another accuracy ECC5, which will be worse than this particular ECC4, you know, because the number of dimension is still more increasing. Now, why does this particular thing happen? And similarly, it happens with respect to the 100,000 features and 10,000 features. As you increase the number of features, after the threshold value, your accuracy actually decreases. But the next important question is that, why does it actually happen, right? That you need to understand. Now see, as we are going from M1 to M2 and M2 to M3, as we are increasing this number of features till the threshold value, the model is able to learn more and more information from that particular data more and more unique information, more and more necessary information to actually predict the price or the target output of the particular use case. But after the threshold value, what happens is that as the number of features increases exponentially, guys, this is the most important term. If it increases exponentially, the model gets confused because you are feeding him a lot of information from that particular use case itself. So the model gets confused. It literally you know, the thought of that particular model literally scatters out. It will not be able to observe all that particular information. Hence, the accuracy decreases, you know. So the confusion on that particular model after learning with respect to so many number of features, it tends to make the accuracy of that particular model lower. And similarly, after this particular threshold point, when we see that our mod, uh, our features is actually increasing exponentially from 100 to 200 to 1000 to 10,000, the accuracy will be decreasing. And that is what is called as curse of dimension. Now, this is very important, guys, because in my next video, I'm going to discuss about then how we should select, like how many number of features I have to use for a, for a, for a particular problem statement, whether I should be using 10, 12, right, from that particular number of features. So there are a lot of tests, you know, there are some tests called as chi-square tests. There is something called as correlation coefficient, okay? All these features will be actually necessary to actually find out like how many number of features will be used. So in my next video, I'll be coming up with the feature selection part and then which will also be a very important part of the feature engineering. I hope you like this particular videos guys. Uh, please do uh, subscribe to my channel if you have not subscribed and please share with all your friends. Like, comment. I'll see you all in the next video. Have a great day ahead. Uh, thank you one and all.